this is the all the time and i'm uh, doing like free meso cycle when everything is going well i wanted to do more yeah if i'm good i feel good i want to do it more, more. there is also a method that is uh, focused uh, not on those, those cycles but it's called a starting map i am the person that's doing this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I recommended to do lactate te test or some another uh, test to to know your uh, heart rate zone. You you are um, the coach for a lot of athletes. Do, do you know how many athletes are currently under your care? Yeah, yeah, I I know ex exactly. It's uh, 18. Welcome everybody. Today I'm talking with Michał Olejnik, um probably currently the best athlete in a men's elite in Poland. Uh, the very, um, very ambitious runner that I've known for many, many years. I've known him since he was, what is it, Michal? 10 years, 10 years. 10 years old, right? When, since he was 10 years old. So that's a long time. And I'm super happy that he came to the channel. And we're going to be talking today about, um, well, many different things. But the general theme of our talk today is going to be about something that I haven't touched on this channel on yet, which is physical preparation and physical training regarding um, uh, orienteering itself. So I'm super happy to have you here, uh, Michal. Uh, thanks for coming by. Hello, thanks. <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned, I want to talk about physical preparation. And th the first thing I want to touch is training physically. Yeah, you know, let's, let's put aside the map training for a moment now, and let's just focus on, you, know, you want to get better as a runner uh, uh, on track but uh, you're still an orienteer. So you have in the back of your head that you will have to run on the map. You have to uh, get off the path, off the road, run through the hard terrain. So um, how is the training or how should the training of an orienteer uh, be different compared to someone that know that will be running purely on track, on asphalt roads? Uh, what, what are the differences? Uh, the biggest difference I think it's the the strength training. Uh, our body has to be ready for uh, for tough running, for uh, bushes, marshes. So we have to be st strength much more than uh, flat runners, and uh, our all body has to be ready for that. So it's not only only the legs, uh, for sure, and. Uh, I think uh, we have to spend uh, a lot of time out of uh, paths to to know how to do it in uh, with with map, and uh, for for sure it's uh, harder than asphalt running. Mm -hmm. These two ways are the the biggest difference, I think. Okay, so basically you need to um, use a lot of more strength training in your regime. Yeah. And you also have to get used to running off the pass. Um, you, you're following um, the careers and uh, the books of any of many other um, successful runners. So we talked about it before we started the main part of the interview. Um, do you do you recall any uh, runners that are doing, for example, cross country running or maybe mountain runs, not orienteering? that um, have a similar training regime that an orienteer would have? Are, are these people a good inspiration for an orienteering physical training preparation? Yeah, like uh, Kilian. Uh, uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, I, I read the book, uh, which probably he wrote, or um, I, I, I don't remember, but uh, yeah, he, he is doing a lot of things uh, which we should do. In orienteering, I mean the physically physical part. Uh, so he could be motivation for for for, for us. Uh, I, okay. I'm not sure anyone else, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a good example, a very popular one. Uh, a guy who is quite active on social media as well. A guy that is actually posting a lot of information regarding his training regime online for free for everyone to see. So, you know, if, if someone is interested, it is definitely worth checking out. Um, okay. How would you say a typical training plan for an orienteer should look like when it comes to 
And let's look at, let's, you know, let's have a big picture for now and then we will try to focus on uh, the, the smaller elements of it. So now let's talk about the seasons, right? So you, you ended the previous season and now you're starting the preparation for the, for the next season. How would you break down the periods that will now lead you to uh, the most important start during the next season? So uh, you should count it uh, from the biggest uh, competition and then you you should going back and uh, you should you you have to know how how many times you have it's, how much time you have yeah yeah usually, usually for me walk is in july uh -huh. so i've got like seven eight months so it's a lot of time and uh, i know that the real season is starting like april but mostly in may mm -hmm. and uh, that's the first biggest competition so i have a lot of time to 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 be prepared for for that so uh this the this is the the time all the time and i'm uh, doing like free meso meso cycle and uh, then i'm it's like a first one is uh, it's a base one it's a uh, oxygen running strength training and uh, it's uh, time when i want to do as much as i can to be prepared for all season and then i'm using that part that part to do the second and third one so second one is like uh, using this one and uh, doing stuff which uh, prepare prepare me for for the for the last one uh, so some lactate lactate uh, trainings and uh, some harder session some uh, some smaller competition and mm -hmm. uh, still quite a uh, quite big volume and then the last one is like a starting time and uh, then i'm not uh, doing uh, as much trainings as uh, on the first or second part of preparing and uh, then i'm focused on 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 racing uh, between if i have a time i'm doing a hard session and uh, uh, yeah, which are which are some details it's it's not so 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 important like a first or second part so uh, uh, these are like kind of like the, the fillers between the competitions and it probably depends how often you have the competitions yeah exactly uh, exactly so uh, a lot of times uh, smaller competitions are quite important for me because i know that okay this is uh, some hard training for me and i have to do it uh, well or i have to do it uh, as hard as i can mm -hmm. uh, i have to push hard to 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 be prepared for the for the uh, biggest competition but mm -hmm. uh, between this uh, competition between uh, this 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 hard trainings i'm not training a lot but still it it uh, depends because I think for me, not so much. It could be a lot of for. Yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> but uh, for, for you, it's like not a lot compared to the previous periods, right? Exactly. So uh, I think the second part of this whole uh, period is the most important, but I cannot do it this part without the first one. Right. So. Okay. So So in the first one, basically you focus on core training, uh, general exercises, and also endurance. So as you said, oxygen uh, base running. And then during the second part, you gain more speed. So it, it the training uh, picks up on the intensity. So you probably run faster, maybe less kilometers, but more, uh, more intense. Uh, kilo kilometers is uh, mostly the same, but I, okay. I don't like I count uh, trainings of kilometers sure. the volume of i i, I like the, the counting or the, the time in hours so, yeah in hours so uh, the time is less but kilometers is mostly the same like in the first part but i'm running faster so uh, so the time is shorter yeah yeah it makes sense makes sense um 
And then, yeah, and then the last cycle is like the start, pure start preparation period. You do more orienteering probably during that time. And you also uh, do more races at uh, top speed, right? Just to test things out, make sure that you're where you're supposed to be and, you know, get ready for the most important competition. Yes, and uh, to be prepared for many uh, competitions, right? I have to do a lot of before. I like competitions. Of course, I could do just a walk or and some competitions before, but I really like to do it. Of course, I have to do a, another because uh, that's my job. Uh, but I really like it. So if I want to compete almost every week from Monday, from May to 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 July, uh, I have to be prepared for that. So yeah, yeah, got it. Um, all right, let's move on. So um, then the, those mesocycles are divided um, theoretically. I don't know if you use this terminology, but they may be divided into micro cycles and so macro and micro cycles. Very close sounding in English. Uh, so can you explain what's the difference between one and the other? Yeah, and uh, the ma macro cycle is... Uh uh has one or or two three four micro cycles and uh, it's a time when you focus on something uh, like a big volume uh, but uh, easy easy part and you are doing it like two three weeks and after that is another macro cycle but still in the same mesocycle uh, but in this macro cycle, there are smaller micro cycle. So if I'm doing two weeks of big volume, I have then like four, uh, mostly four uh, micro cycles. And in these micro cycles, I got like three, four days of some trainings. And usually, usually I repeat it four times and that's a macro cycle. Okay, so the, so the micro for you is like four days around this? Three, four days. It, it, three, four it depends, days. but three, four days. Okay, okay. And then Good. macro cycle is like two, three weeks, but sometimes uh, like one week after this uh, period of big volume, I've got uh, some easy time. So it's like two, three micro cycle. So one macro cycle, uh, like one week. Yeah. What, what's the purpose? What's the goal of designing it like this? So that you uh, follow those micro cycles and um, those macro cycles one after another. How, how is it supposed to help the runner get better? Okay. So macro cycle is like uh, if you are training a lot, but you have to take some break, some, some, some rest to, to recover and uh, to build your, your shape and don't have a injury so you have to rest a little bit and then again big volume and then again something like that but you can between that you can uh, use one uh, macro cycle uh, like uh, competing like a fast one so big volume rest uh, then competing and again you can do a uh, big uh, big volume and uh, that's my way of uh, first uh, months of, of preparing. And uh, in these macro cycles, I, I've got micro cycles, which, which are uh, mostly the same, but it's uh, preparing me for, uh, for the, the, the biggest uh, trainings. I mean, the, the, the most important. So the strength training, and then, uh, for example, it's uh, like... A, endurance running uh, like a uh, uh, moderate pace and after that i'm doing some some long training and i'm repeating it uh, so and yeah it's it's still like like like, like ups that. and downs ups and downs yeah uh, and uh, it helps me to do everything what i needed but mm -hmm. uh, the correct way so after strength training, I can do something fast. Then I have to take some easy day, but still I can do long training. 
and after this training i'm ready to to do strength training so uh yeah that's the okay so in general the cycles uh just to rephrase it are supposed to give you an opportunity kind of to alternate between hard um, periods and a little bit of a rest period so that you don't kill yourself with too much volume and too much you know strength too much intensity of the training and and actually uh, it also helps your muscles grow right because if they get this uh, input of uh, a, a hard microcycle and they're like oh shit we need to get tougher get stronger because uh, something strange is going on and apparently uh, we you know we are fighting for our lives maybe who knows um, and and then start they start building up but of course they can't do it infinitely so you need to let them rest a little bit but then before they realize that it's actually not the case and it's all good you can chill you just hit them with another microcycle of, of hard, harder training and this helps you um, like in, in, in time I'm, I'm thinking how to show it yeah for the users it will be from here to here so in time, it will help you steadily get up. Although, as you said, it will be ups and downs, ups and downs, right? Exactly, exactly like that. And uh, for sure, it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, what's I, difficult about it in, in your mind? In, in my mind, it's uh, when everything is going well, I want to I wanted to do more. Yeah. If I'm good, I feel good. I want to do it more, more. And uh, I want to be like... Uh, Daniel, Matthias, Olaf, and uh, so I have to do more, and uh, then it 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 could be too much. So okay. you have so... to plan it. So you, uh, you have to plan it, and uh, you have to. Of course, you can change something, but you cannot do more than you plan it. Yeah. Like, uh, so for you, it's sometimes hard to force yourself to you know stick to the plan and not go overboard, even though you feel good. And you're experienced enough to know that even though you feel good, if you push too hard, uh, it, it will end badly. Exactly. And uh, my idea for that is uh, to have some competition after a hard period. Because if you have it, you have to take some rest before because you want to be good at this competition. Mm -hmm. So I'm planning it like two or three weeks of uh, big volume. And then week after, uh, one week after that, I, I, I have competition. So I know that I have to do some some days of easy, of, uh, of, of rest. Of course, rest for me is not a rest for anyone else, but uh, yeah, some, some rest. And uh, then I'm fresh for this competition. Right. So, yeah. And then after the competition, you can again pick up the volume. Exactly. Right. Um... Okay, um, I have a question that I'm wondering if I want to ask it now or later. I think I'll leave it for later. So uh, let's keep going with the main theme. Uh, so uh, there is also a method that is uh, focused uh, not on those, those cycles, but it's called a starting method. So you basically go from competition to competition and you try to grow your, um, your form, your physical form, um, doing this and of course doing some fill in trainings between the, those competitions what do you think about this does it work i don't know what to what to say i mean uh maybe i don't understand the question because uh... okay so i am the person that's doing this <laughs> and uh so basically I enjoy orienteering too much to avoid the competition or to run the competition slow. If I run the competition slowly, it's boring. If I don't go to the competition because if I think that theoretically in, at this point in time, I should do a different training session, I'm not willing to sacrifice the competition for it. So I'm basically training like uh, going to the competition, running Saturday and Sunday. Uh, let, let's say that these are more or less two-day competitions, right? So I'm running Saturday and Sunday. Then, then during, and I'm then tired after the competition, so I have to rest during the week. So I take uh, lighter training sessions during the week. And then I, again, I have my hard training sessions during the weekend, again, Saturday and Sunday, unless it's like a three day long competition or five day long competition, which happens as well. Uh, so can you get better with this kind of approach? And I kind of know the answer to it, but I want to hear yours. <laughs> no, but 
it's a way which uh, can do something for you to 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 make sense with with that you have to train a lot before that period uh, some years ago when the pandemic was uh, yeah. we had a polish championships week after week and there was like six weeks uh, of competitions week after week right. so i was training almost like nine ten months and then i focused just on this competition so that was like like you said saturday sunday the race day then some rest and then again uh, uh, some competitions at, at the weekend and repeat and repeat and repeat and i felt really good after five six weeks of that mm -hmm. but just because of i trained a lot of before this period and yeah. in this period I was uh, doing just some easy trainings between competitions. Yeah. So, but, but you're talking about a professional level, right? The, the top level. Uh, if you if you go down to a lower level, I think that you can make progress with this kind of an approach. Um, okay. yes. Provided that, of course, you have enough strength to run these competitions. And, you know, I have been running almost my whole life. So I kind of have a strong base. I'm not a beginner runner. So I think I'm okay. And also, well, I, I a little bit of lied that I'm running all of those competitions with the racing pace, pushing hard. I, I'm not running all of them with the racing pace because sometimes uh, the map is slowing me down uh, enough for me to, to not be super tight at the end of the race. And sometimes I just choose to take it easy. For example, if you have training instead of a competition. Uh, but, but in the end, you know, I, I know it's not optimal. But at the same time, if I would like have to run uh, for myself, I'm saying only for myself now, if I would have to run, train for three months before going to the competition, I would probably get injured and not compete at all. <laughs> yeah, so if you can uh, do some easy pace on, on the race, it's, uh, it's, it, it's the way you can, you can use. I yeah. mean, maybe, maybe one of, uh, of these race at the weekend is uh, like a fast, like a really race and the the second one is a easy pace but still on the on, on competitions so if you can do it it's it's good way but i i cannot i'm too ambitious and uh, i cannot do some easy pace on competitions it's hard isn't it like maria my wife is always uh laughing at me when that when i say okay i'm going to take this race easy she knows that my easy is her hard <laughs> So whenever I'm running easy, it's like still probably 80% of my full speed. So, so that's an easy race. Um, okay. Mm, let's take a step back and talk about beginners for a moment. How should they start their training so that it's not too much and it, it, it doesn't lead to injuries? So someone is starting their journey uh, with orienteering and they you know they are ambitious like you and they want to get better as fast as possible and again let's put aside the math part the orienteering part um, what, what would be your suggestions uh, for that kind of a person to start their training physical training regime uh, for sure the I mean about just physically uh, because map is more important when you are sure. beginners but yeah that's, uh, that's why I said let's, let's disregard yeah. this for a moment yeah uh so i work a lot of with my heart rate in my trainings so i recommend it the same for exact especially for beginners because if i told you 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 uh, uh, run easy you know what is easy when i told you some moderate pace probably you will know it and if i told you okay it's hard one you, you will know it, but if you are beginners, you completely don't know uh, which which is which. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I recommend that to uh, to do lactate test or some another uh, test to to know your uh, heart rate zone, and uh, then to have a good plan and uh, do it with plan, not like uh many of of uh, of athletes like okay i can do faster so then i will be faster on competitions it's not working so first of all it's a 
doing a test to, 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 to know your heart rate zones and then make a good plan and realize that plan. So for the beginners, I think that's, that's the most important. Of course, there are uh, some advice like a lot of strength training, a lot of easy trainings uh, and stuff like that. But this free, I think is, is the most important. Yeah, I like it. I like it because I totally agree that beginners, they they usually are too ambitious, you know, and when, when I'm talking with people that don't have any coaches, you know, and they just, oh, I started running. Okay, what do you, what do, you do? Well, I, I go and run 10 kilometers three times a week. All right. Uh, how long does it take you to run 10 kilometers? Well, about four or five minutes. And I'm like, you know, for the beginner, uh, the person that I know should should run probably around uh, six min uh, 60 minutes uh, for 10 kilometers at the at the beginning. It's it's pretty hard. And I'm like, how do you feel after the training? Oh, I'm I'm almost dead. <laughs> yeah, and, so, and another training, next training is faster than than that one. And uh, but, but if they can, to, yes, they are trying to do it faster and faster, and uh, that's crazy. Yeah, because this is the progress, right? If you can't do it faster, you're not progressing. <laughs> so yeah, I, I totally agree that you know getting those um, zones that you can then stick to, and then having a plan that incorporates those zones, and then following it, uh, not not ignoring your your coach. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking about Mary. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, Ole is the coach of my wife. So uh, they sometimes disagree on the, what, what should be the right training session <laughs> for her. Sometimes. Um, so she, she, uh, yeah, I mean, she, she does her best, but sometimes she doesn't follow the training plan to the letter. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so you mentioned the tests and I actually have a, the next question about tests. How, how do you test your current physical level? And also the another one that is very closely connected to it is how do you measure the progress of your, you know, the, the success of your training plan? It, it depends of period. Uh, if I'm on this first period, for me, the most important is uh, moderate pace. Uh, so I measure the pace and uh, lactate after the uh, moderate uh, pace training some mm -hmm. like 10 or 15 16 k of moderate pace and then i measure the heart rate the pace and the lactate yeah so so, so that's the level of the lactate acid i think that i think that's what it's called right so just uh, just a note for everyone else uh, you need uh, like uh, um, you need a special device to measure it right yeah. you, you can't do it without the, the with just a watch yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's measured from the from the blood, so from, yeah, from blood, yes. Blood, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I'm using this device. I'm using heart rate and GPS, mm -hmm. and uh, it should be, but not, not like uh, trainings after trainings. Yeah, it cannot be like uh, if if I do the moderate pace uh, in the first micro cycle. It could be the worst in the second and third, but it, it should be better in the another macro cycle. Sure. Yeah. So, so do, do you do you measure it at the same intervals between the micro cycle, ma ma macro cycle? Micro. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And then I see, okay, it's better and better. But uh, I think in orienteering, the most important is uh, lactate uh, pace. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's a point where your body is not uh, recovering uh, your your lactate mm -hmm. from your blood so blood yeah so uh, it's the most important point i think in the forest orienteering because in this point your head is still uh, your head still could uh, reading the map correctly and uh, yeah so this point is uh, I mean, uh, the pace of this point is the most important for me. So if I see that this pace is growing up, I mean, it's the b better and better. So that's the... Uh, okay, so... That, that, so... That, that's, the pro that's the progress for me. I mean, sure. uh, for, for example, now I've got it on some free 
10, 3, 15, some between between that. And uh, two months ago, it was like 3, 20, 20, 25. So now I know that I'm 10, 15 seconds better than two months ago. Okay. And this is important for you as an orienteer, because uh, as you mentioned, this is the pace at which you feel comfortable running still with the map. Exactly. And, and when you're running with the map, you try to not go too much above this because you know that then your map reading skills, your thinking abilities will just go uh, go down and it will, it will you will be more prone to make mistakes. Especially in the first part, because in the second part of the race, of, of course, I'm uh, I'm out of this this zone. But uh, then I, I have a plan for for the next uh, uh, next uh, controls. So it's, it's the most important in the, on, on the first part of the race. Got it. Um, do, you, do you also think that like, uh, if someone doesn't have access to the device to measure lactate acid, um, is it okay to measure the progress, for example, with some tests like running, I don't know, one kilometer race, three kilometer races from time to time to, to measure, you know, am I getting better or, or not? Uh, it's not or the would best... you suggest something else? It's not the best way in the first period uh, when you are focused not on uh, about uh, fast running. You are then focused on endurance, strength training and st stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But still, you don't have to uh, use uh, lactate. You, you can use just heart rate. Heart rate, yes. And uh, I think every runner should have a heart rate. Uh, Monitor. So monitor yeah. and not in the war on on the watch it's uh, it's not working you have you, you you should have a heart rate monitor with uh, i mean the, the the chest one yeah the chest belt yeah uh, yeah absolutely and and then you uh, you just compare what um heart rate do i have at a certain pace you know and if the heart exactly. rate is and going if, if, the, if the pace is better and better yeah you, you are doing good job and exactly uh, right so if, if 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 last time i was running 150 uh beats per minute of my heart and mm -hmm. my pace was i don't know four minutes per kilometer and today i'm running 150 but my pace is 345 then it's a progress right exactly mm -hmm. okay all right um I, I was talking last saturday with lisa risby you know, the Swedish runner, uh, you probably know her. And uh, we were talking about uh, getting better at running downhill for some part of our conversation, because I asked her, you know, what, what are uh, the uh, sites that you feel like you need to improve on? And she mentioned running downhill. And I remember that some time ago, we had a discussion about it, uh, about getting better at running downhill. So if you were to sum it up, what would be the advice for people that want to get better at pushing harder down here, being faster running down here with the map this time on an on orienteering race? Mm -hmm. uh, for sure, you have confidence. I mean, uh, I've got it. And I remember when, when I was 15, 16, uh, some guy, Piotr Paszyński, told uh, that okay, you are so fast on, on downhill. And uh, then I realized that, okay, I've got it. So I don't have to train too much to, to, to run fast down. But it's because of uh, my confidence when I'm running down. And uh, I had uh, some time after uh, twist my ankle. Then I, I, I was too, too much secure after that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have uh, this confidence. So I was running uh, slow. So I think uh, the most important part is in, in your head about going downhill. Uh, but still, you, you, you can train it. Also with, 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 with map. But when you realize that, okay, this, uh, this, this uh, route uh, is, is, is down. I mean, the, to this control is, is just on, on the down. You can read the map before. Uh, remember everything and then push hard and that's good training I mean doing it is is is, uh, is a good training for that 
So how, how to build that confidence? If some, someone doesn't have the confidence to run hard downhill, how to build that confidence? Uh, cross some, some, uh, some border. I mean, if you are going down a little bit faster than usually and everything is okay, then you realize, okay, I'm alive. It's okay. I can do it like that. Then yeah. you, are, you, you, you have this confidence. And next time you can do it a little bit faster. And then if you, if you, if you do it like 10 times, you will have this confidence. Okay. So you, basically it's simple. You just have to push yourself through some line that is in your head and, mm -hmm. you know, see what happens. And if you twist your ankle, <laughs> yeah. you, you'll, you'll probably have to like, you but, know. but if the line is here, you can do it like, like here and then probably mostly it's, it, it will be okay. Yeah. But if the line is here and you will do it like that, probably you will, you will twist your ankle. Yeah, so tiny steps, small increments. And I guess, you know, it, w one thing is for your head to overcome uh, maybe some, uh, maybe you're scared a little bit just of running downhill and you need to get a little bit more brave. Um, but I think that also your body has to adapt to a little bit of a different steps that you're taking when you're running downhill you take longer strides um your um your stability is also working a lot right so again probably the core training that we mentioned at the very beginning is super important over here because the stronger your muscles are the, the more stable your body is the easier it will be to keep yourself um, running downhill with higher speed yeah that's why i told you before that uh the strength training is important in orienteering and exactly in the not not only going uh, up but going down is uh, also using that so you have to be prepared but then you you you, you should use it okay we, uh, actually a, a question popped into my head so we had a discussion uh, last training camp with Piotr Grzeńca and we were discussing the stability uh, and the exercises the training that can get you more stability and Piotr said and I think I agree with it that he, he read in one of the books that to get more stability more balance actually stability and balance are a, a little bit two of the different things but let, let's say that it's more or less the same uh, for, for the sake of this question if, if you want to be more stable all you need is stronger muscles basically and the stronger your muscles are the, the better stability you're going to have and you know we were discussing these uh, try these exercises that you can do that you know standing on this inflated um the red or, or whatever we call it in english and you know on, on one leg for example closing your eyes balancing so um and, and Gotek said that it helps you get better balance in this particular situation but it doesn't mean for example that you will be better while balancing on a line because that's a different kind of balance and your body again needs to learn to do it so do you feel these kind of exercises are useful uh, while doing the, the preparing for for stability training yeah i think it's useful so i agree and disagree with piotrek mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh... Of course, you have to have strong muscles, but these muscles has to know uh, how to how to do this 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 uh, this balance job. This yeah. Uh, yeah. So so you have to train it. Of course, you can train it in hard terrain. Exactly uh, right. Uh, for example, here on Tenerife. It's uh, it's it's amazing because uh, uh, it looks like it's easy, but then it's a lot of small rocks. So yeah. you are still like like that, uh, and uh, uh, it's a for for my muscles. It's like a balance training. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Oh my god, I was looking so much under my feet on Tenerife. <laughs> I was so afraid that I would take a wrong step somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, and so basically, I, I had the, the, the same arguments in, on, on when we were discussing with him that, um, sure, that the muscle strength is always important, right? And it will definitely come in use. Exactly. We, but, so, so, sorry, sorry. We, we've, without strength muscles, you, you, you probably cannot do it. But with 
you can still cannot do it. So it's important, but you have to use it correctly. Yeah, so you need to also teach the muscles to react in the proper way exactly. to uh, certain situations. And again, of course, the thing that you mentioned, so go going just and running in a difficult terrain will uh, keep learning uh, the muscles this, uh, this yeah, big behavior. We, we, can, we can imagine uh, Pudzianowski, Mariusz, in the forest. He's probably not so good in, in running like like that but yeah probably he has, uh, he has a good muscles for for that yeah but exactly yeah that, that's true i also yeah, like uh, i remember this amazing i have this amazing memory in my head so w when i was small i used to walk uh, a lot along the um, um concrete fences so like concrete wall uh, that is surrounding uh, a property uh, this was at my grandma's and I used to just walk on it. It was like, you know, this narrow, like three centimeters. And I just walked around the whole uh, property. It was fun for me. And it is a balancing exercise, isn't it? Like So it's not like walking on the line because the line is moving and the fence is solid, uh, but it's still, you know, a narrow path that you need to follow. So I enjoyed it and I felt that I have a pretty good balance. And then on one of the training camps, uh, Piotr Krampinski brought a line that he just stretched between two trees, right? And I thought, oh, cool, that's going to be so much fun. My balance is good, so I'm going to be awesome on it, right? I stepped on the line and I couldn't balance it at all. No way. I was falling off. With even, I couldn't even make one step forward. And when I just you know, tried it a few times, stopped and thought about it, I realized that what my body is doing is actually counterproductive. So I'm doing completely the wrong moves trying to balance myself on the line. So when I realized that, I stepped on the line again. I again tried a few more times. I think it took me about 20 minutes to figure it out. But then after those 20 minutes, again, my, my muscles, my body, my, my brain probably uh, mostly adapted right to a different kind of a situation that the line that I'm stepping on is moving and I have to counter that move. And then after those 20 minutes, I was able to walk on the line without any major problems again. But... It's it's the brilliant. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's the same with every element of the training. You have to understand it, uh, and then you have to train it, because if you understand it, it's still like okay, I know how to do it, but I'm not doing it, so I cannot. Yeah. But if you are doing without understanding, you are doing a probably. Uh, bad direction bad bad job like like uh, not effective so you have to understand the element of training and then you have to train yeah i, lo I love this part a lot i love this part uh, for several reasons but you know first of all um many people that follow the training plans they don't understand why they are doing a certain training session uh i, I by my talks with different people here on this channel um i i, I saw that almost all top athletes they either fully understand what they are doing during the training sessions or they build their own training plans or consult their training plans with the coach, uh, which is, uh, you know, still getting an external help, but again, understanding what's going on. And uh, I think it's tremendously helpful to, to realize this because, uh, as you said, it will get you uh, the results a lot quicker. And for example, this is also why whenever I'm doing the video here for the channel that I'm trying to explain some topic, First of all, I'm trying uh, to explain why is it in general important that we, we talk about this, right? W what is this causing? What, what will be the benefits of this? So that people get the idea, okay, now I understand uh, what, what it does and how, how it will help me uh, to, to get better. And, and then I'm giving the tips on how to improve on it because you know, I could give, give those tips at the very beginning and end the video in five minutes. But I think that this is not the best way of uh, you know delivering the message. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you have to know that uh, on on training you will be alone. So if you don't understand the training and everything is going well, it's okay. But then if something is wrong, you have to decide alone without yeah. coach. Maybe sometimes there is a coach, but usually you are alone and you have to do. Uh, 
good good decision you, you have to make a good decision so exactly so what, what will you do if you feel bad at that certain day right if your if your leg hurts if your belly hurts right well yeah is but it... that, that's that that's quite easy you you will skip this training but uh, probably you should well it, it depends you know you might just have this strange feeling in your belly right and should i ah. push forward and should i not right or i feel a little bit under the weather i have a running nose right is it a good idea to uh, do the hard session or maybe i should do a, a, a exactly. shorter exactly. session right? exactly and if you know your body you know what to do i mean uh, now after traveling uh, my heart rate is lower than usually but i know it and i'm not pushing harder like uh, on the easy training i could do really fast training because the heart the heart rate is okay but uh, i know that the heart rate is lower because of traveling yesterday so i'm doing it uh, easier uh, with lower heart rate and uh, i'm just uh, recovering and uh, uh, waiting for for better days uh, but you have to know it okay I actually don't know this. So, do you know why your heart rate is lower after uh, the traveling period? Because you, because you are tire, tired, and uh, it's not only after traveling; uh, it's uh, after bad night. I mean, without sleep, uh, it's uh, after a long period of uh, big volume of training. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are tired, you are something like. Uh, low battery i mean your 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 body is is is, is going a little bit uh, like uh, to sleep or something like that and the uh, heart rate is, is is lower and, and then then you go to the training session and during the training session yeah like uh, let's say that you're running the same pace as you were running last week and your heart rate will also be lower or will it be higher yes yes lower lower, lower. so for example yesterday after uh short uh, short night <laughs> and uh, long travel i have like uh, 10 15 uh, beeps uh, lower than usually but i didn't do faster tra faster pace i could i could do run not like 420 like uh, or or i could run like 4 per k and then the heart rate could be normally but I know that it's 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 not the same. Uh, okay. So what uh, signifies or, or what indicates when you go to the training session and your heart rate is abnormally high, you sh you know that you have you should have like one sixty five, but instead you have like one seventy five during the same pace. What does that mean to you? Uh, two things. Uh, it could be before competitions when you were on the hard training and then you relax and then it's easy to to make bigger uh, heart rate uh, it could be like a stress on the warm-up uh, so it's it's normally and uh, you, you 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 shouldn't be afraid about it uh, but uh, sometimes it's uh, it's a it's a sign that uh, you are tired but uh, maybe after hard training one day before so you have to think what you did one day before because sometimes i'm i'm doing uh, one or two hard sessions per day and after day after that i have a bigger uh, heart rate mm -hmm. but i i know that okay i did uh, something uh, hard yesterday so i'm tired but it's a uh, like a long uh, like like a short uh, short period or so i know that i will next day i will be okay can it can it also be a sign of an infection yes 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 for sure right so if you if you're starting to get sick for example but you still you know maybe you don't feel it yet but your body already does yeah. and you yeah. go to a training session and your heart rate is a lot higher it is it's also an important indicator right mm -hmm. um all right um as we mentioned before in the part that uh goes to patronite on youtube you, you are um, the coach for a lot of athletes. Do, do you know how many athletes are currently under your care? Yeah, yeah, I, I know exactly. It's 18. 18, right? So that's quite a significant number. Um, so, and I as, I, as I mentioned, my wife is uh, part, uh, part of the group. 
And I know that many people are um, really enjoying working with you. I think you have lots of good qualities as a coach as well. Now, but I, uh, but I wanted, what I wanted to ask is, um, you also mentioned that you have your own coach. And why do you feel it is important for you uh, as, a, as an athlete to, uh, and maybe other people as well to have their own coaches, even if they have the knowledge to train themselves? Uh, that's, uh, I have a lot of uh, uh, ideas why it's important uh, for me. I'm I'm too ambitious, so he has to stop me a lot of times, uh -huh. uh, and uh, he's the person who is looking it uh, without uh, feelings. I mean, I wanted to be a, a champion. Still, I want to be a world champion. So, uh, a lot of times, I want to do something too much to. Quickly, yeah, too quickly, and uh, he is the person which uh, which is stopping me, or he's thinking like, okay, no, this way will be better, uh, and trust me. And then I'm doing it, and it is like that, and uh, it's funny because sometimes if I cannot talk with him, I'm thinking, what could I say, my athlete, and then I I I, I re realize that okay. I shouldn't do it or I should do it in another way or something like that. So that's awesome. Yeah, that that's awesome. But, but uh, it's for me, it's impossible to be a coach for, for, for myself. It's, uh, it's very important. Even if, uh, if I know what to do, I mean, I can do this plan and I'm planning together with, with my coach, some, some trainings, mm -hmm. but still the analyze, if we are doing it together, it's it's better. He see something what what we what I'm not, which I not which I don't see. So uh, it's it's important for me to to have him. And for other people, do you think there are more? You said that there are many arguments. So what would be some other arguments for other people to to have a coach and not train themselves? Uh, you don't have to think about uh, all this stuff. I mean. If someone was thinking about your plan, probably it's okay. You can just look at this, agree or disagree, uh, uh, talk with, with with coach, but you don't have to think too much about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's usually better way than thinking about everything. Okay. Um, last thing, last thing that I want to ask in this part. And then we, we have, I also have some follow-up questions. <laughs> so um, when I was talking with Kasper Foster, he said that when he was preparing for the World Champs in Czech Republic, uh, he, he decided that being strong on the climbs is going to be very important because there was a, a, a lot of uh, uphill running over there. And he tried to incorporate a lot of uphill running during his training regime as well. So he said that, when he like compared his weekly volume to the long distance pace and uh, he, he figured that he should be doing a lot, around 3000 meters of climb per week. And uh, in the end, he didn't do as much, but he did still quite a lot. And he said that he did around 5000 climb per week. Uh, I don't remember how many kilometers he, ra he runs uh, in a week, but probably more than 100. Uh, so it's like 5,000 climb um, over 100 kilometers or more than 100 kilometers per week. Um, do, do you think that this, uh, this kind of approach, when you look at the competition that is the goal for the season and you're like, okay, the characteristics of this competition is this and that. So I need to adjust my training plan accordingly. And um, in, in this case, you know, implement a lot of uphill running. Do you think it's, uh, it's, it's smart? And I expect yes. But also, do you think that um, going so, well, I want to say extreme. I'm not sure it's a good way. I'm not sure it was extreme, but definitely harder than uh, other runners. Going so extreme in, in this direction is a good idea. For sure, it's a good idea to, to do training uh, with character 
which uh, which competitions will be yeah. so it's a brilliant idea but you have to know how to do it and uh, of course casper is a is a master so a new generation master and uh, maybe sometimes it's uh, it's it's good to to do something crazy on, on your training but i'm not a fan of of, of this so for example uh, it's the same this year about uh, switzerland there will be a lot of climbing yeah and that's right i knew that uh, and when i was in uh, october or september on on camp last year i tried to do a lot of climbing and i did like almost 5000 i did like 120 or 30k uh, per week and uh, in this week i did almost 5000 climbing and uh, after this week i was tired for 3 weeks 4 weeks that was so hard for me to to take a rest after that and uh, i knew that okay that was too much for me but uh, I did it uh, and I knew that it could be too much, but I wanted to check it mm -hmm. before this year. So I checked <laughs> and then <laughs> now I know it, it that was too much for me. And uh, uh, now when I'm analyzing my my uh, preparation, I know that it it, it shouldn't be more than 4,000. Of course, it's, it, it depends, but... Uh, but still, uh, I know that uh, I cannot uh, be out of this line of something like four four thousand. It's it's yeah. too much. And then so, my muscles are. And and, it, and it's probably individual as well, right? So other people might have a better tolerance, for example, for strength training uh, than than you or someone else. So it's also important sure. to know your limits and your body. For 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 sure, everyone has to know his limits and. Uh, of course, Casper is a better runner, not only better orienteering runner. And uh, so probably he's prepared better than me for climbing. So maybe that, that limit for me is 4,000 and for him is 5,000 or five and a half. Uh, so he could do 5,000 per climbing per meters per, per week, and but I cannot. So it's important to know because you cannot follow the the best plan because uh, it could be too much for you so yeah you, you will just get overburned yeah you know, and it will end in a disaster in the end yeah. all right awesome uh ole that was an amazing um chat and we are going to continue in a moment uh for for the remainder uh but this will be the end of the main part so for everyone listening uh, i hope that you've enjoyed it um I think that it was uh, really interesting to listen a little bit uh, more from another person about the physical preparation part. For those of you that are, you know, most of you are probably not that advanced. So I, I think that like the, the insights of uh, how the training should look like and how the even the, the re training plan, training regime for the beginners or intermediate runners uh, should, should be constructed. Um, it's definitely important to know and to realize. And as we both mentioned, like understanding what you're doing is really an important part of this whole process. So hope you so uh, hope, hope you uh, enjoyed it and hope you've learned something. Uh, thanks a lot, Ole, uh, for um, or Nihao <laughs> for for joining this chat and sharing your knowledge with people. It was really amazing. Thanks a lot.